So my name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the Executive Editor of Data Versus. We'd like to thank you for joining November's installment of the monthly Data Diversity Webinar Series, Enterprise Data World. This webinar series is designed to give our Enterprise Data World Conference attendees education year-round, a conference we've been producing with, in partnership with DEMA International now for nearly 20 years. Enterprise Data World will be held this year in Austin, Texas, April 27th through May 4th, 2014. Today's webinar is sponsored by Target, and we'll be discussing Make Big Data Work for You with Morton Middlefart. A couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. We will be collecting them via the Q&A section in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights of their questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Let me introduce to you our speaker today, Morton Middlefart. Morton has over two decades of experience in developing and managing business intelligence solutions. He's currently CTO and Chief Product Visionary for Target. Morton holds an MBA from Henley Management College and two PhDs from Rushmore University and Alborn University in Denmark. Morton holds seven U.S. patents and 25 worldwide for his technical developments in business intelligence and analytics, placing him among the the top 1.8% of all active inventors. In his spare time, Morton is an avid skydiving instructor and enthusiast with more than 1,500 airplane jumps and several base jumps to his name. We have a video of one of those base jumps that inspired a blog Morton wrote for Dataversity on our site, and I'll be sure to send everybody a link to that in the follow-up email. And we are lucky to have him here with us today. And with that, I will give the floor to Morton. Hello and welcome. For that very kind introduction, Shannon, and I'll be. Um, I'm so happy to to be here, and I'm uh, very happy for everybody checking in here. Thanks so much for coming. Um, what I'll be spending about 45 minutes uh, on talking about is how to make big data work for you. Uh, in other words, there's a capital work uh, and there's a capital you. Uh, and uh, what I really want to make a point about here is. Uh, about how to practically make big data work in a way that is manageable, uh, not just for enterprise Fortune 500 companies, but also for, shall we say, the little guy, the medium range enterprise and, and, and smaller. Because there's really a lot of things you can do if you then just start uh, to think about how uh, to intelligently use the data. And I guess. A uh, key takeaway that I'll be pushing today is that we should understand how our human uh, ability to adapt is far more superior than, than uh, computing. And then we should use that ability to adapt as a way of building that with the technology we have available in order to run our organizations and uh, enterprises uh, highly competitive into the future. So I'm going to start out talking a little bit about uh, the general idea. So if, um, if you know, I'm just trying to push a button here, one second. <laughs> so if you're a um, human being and you're out of pressure, there's a threat around you. Well, one option that you have is to simply flee what's uh, chasing you. Another option is hide it. I uh, have no illusion with the uh, systems that I'm going to be uh, explaining about today. They're all about finding that, upper, or that, that challenge or, or, or conquering that fear in order to run uh, your organization. What I'm using here is both the target logo, but also what is referred to uh, as the ODA loop, the cycle of continuous observing against the world ordering yourself of what's going on, and then deciding what to do about it. And then, most importantly, to put it into action. If we think about it, uh, that can actually be defined by a number of the BI disciplines we have today available. Uh, I think, in general, the idea is that, that be reporting and analyzing a separate disciplines or getting a dashboard or getting an agent, 
I would argue that, in fact, it's all about integration and the speed with which uh, you can travel this ODA loop. And the reason for saying this is uh, based on some work that was uh, highly successful during the uh, Korean War, uh, in which the American F-86 Sabre was up against the Romaine uh, MiG-15. And um, a guy named John Boyd, who was probably the forefather of the Top Gun school, as we know it, uh, came up with the concept of working in this very tight cycle between observing against the world, looking into from the cockpit of the plane, what was going on. If something was going on, if you saw a dot in the horizon, you would orient yourself, you would figure out what was going on. Based on that, you would make a decision, say engage or not, and based on that, you would put it into action. And the interesting thing with, with the success of this concept was really that the MiG-15 uh, at the time was a plane by better definition. It could fly higher, longer, and faster. But the F-86 uh, sir, had distinct different properties. It had a rounded cockpit that gave the uh, pilot more visibility and also had some hydraulic steering that allowed the action phase to be applied uh, slightly different. So in other words, by working the concept of the ODA loop to go as fast as possible in, uh, the, in the cockpit of, uh, of, uh, of the pilot uh, compared to the one he was uh, competing with, uh, then methodically, uh, the Americans successfully made the F-86 um, Sabre uh, beat the, uh, the uh, MiG-15 in the um, Mainly of the Korean War, and this concept has then been widely applied in 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 many uh, forces today. And I would say that the, what inspired me was a, an article uh, a little ten years ago in How Business Review and the New World Warfare that really originates from this concept of John Boyd. And uh, what I was thinking then was then to say, why don't we instead of just thinking of technology as um, as tools, why don't we think of it as an extension of our way of conducting leadership management? Why don't we, what is excellent leadership and management, excellent execution of strategy, and then apply technology to that? And that is really the result that you share on the screen. If you then map the technologies that were available at the time in the early 2000s, for sure, uh, but the idea of having them integrate very tightly from observation phase and analytics as a natural extension, any dashboard report or agent um, before we get it into the decision phase. And let me just tie a few words to this because this really the eureka moment uh, that I had for uh, um, a little over a decade ago, the idea that cannot be any decision based on any report or dashboard on the analytical process between the two. And they're simply from the fact that if you have a learning organization that learns from its mistakes, whenever something breaks down on the production line, you fix that and then hopefully it's a new problem. I would just say if it's the same problem coming up and again and again, you probably get fired. Uh, so in other words, uh, you have to analyze Hopefully, if you're learning from your mistakes. And things that cannot go directly from a report or from a dashboard directly into concluding what to do about it. It has to have some analytical component. Another thing that's important to say here is that the analytical uh, component has to be user-driven. It can be something that is predefined by the IT staff. It has to be something that the user is completely in control in, shall we say, his leadership cockpit, because um, the IT guy knows about every problem, every opportunity uh, of the organization, uh, say, uh, many months ahead or years ahead. This is definitely something where you as a leader or a capable manager would be wanting to analyze. Uh, now, again, let, let's just, uh, without going too much more into this here, uh, just say that think about yourselves uh, out there listening today. How many of you uh, working in an organization where there's a detachment between uh, what you see on a report 
report, and then if you want to analyze it, you have to kind of like recreate that and put it into another system. Uh, to me, it has to be a very fluent, dynamic process to you you move from one phase to the other, and that's really what we're striving to to create uh, for more than a decade now. So the journey that we're proposing, and now is where we kind of like start to get a little bit into uh, the data that uh, um, around you. It's really that the journey starts out um, we're being very operational. Let's just say we need to produce a certain number of reports or we need to have some dashboards or whatever it is we want to do. Uh, the number of data sources involved in that process uh, will just be one ERP system, maybe adding to that uh, a, a CRM and, and similar systems. But we start small uh, with a pretty well-defined internal um, number of data sources. So from that point on, once we simply, and, and this first phase here is all about just giving users access to, you know, uh, to as large an extent as possible, self-service themselves within what we, you know, traditional BI that we've seen for the past decade or more. Uh, now, the second phase, uh, as I was talking about before, is much more interesting. This is when we start not to see BI and analytics as uh, separate disciplines. That's not when we see the output of BI and analytics and one report or one pie chart or whatever that may be. This is we start to have an interactive learning cycle through the OODA loop with the disciplines outlined on the slide before um, that we seek to integrate you know, one interaction, whether that be one click or one swipe on the iPad, whatever it may be, as fast as possible, moving ourselves from one phase to the next, uh, with the intent of putting things into action. As you can also, if you notice, the courage uh, that we put in the um, in the ODA loop is uh, based on uh, some uh, interesting stuff I'm getting back to. Uh, but it's all about like the more facts you have, the more informed you are about a decision the more likely, if you know the right thing to do, you are to drive it into action. And really what we, we want to do is that we want to allow users to put uh, decisions into action with as much confidence as possible, get data behind them. Now, uh, after this point, let's just say you can see that the phase two is doing BI better than you know it. But, but still doing BI as, uh, and, and analytics uh, to some extent. Now, next phase, and that's really what, what we're going to be uh, talking about, tools and approaches to do today, is when, when we start exploring new data sources, data sources that are not necessarily from inside our own organization, data sources that are not necessarily our own at all, um, but they're still very interesting clues about how to uh, compete uh, against our competitors and whatever uh, we're set out to do. So this presentation here, I'm basically just taking everything else for granted, and we're jumping to say, I will highlight and, and go into the data-driven culture and look at, at what's driving there. So why is this that this is important at all? Why do we even have this conversation here? Well, if we look at the traditional technologies that are working out there, is that we, we're having all these, I mean, this is like a very classic thing to say, especially if you're in a tech field already. You, we, we all almost know that the new devices are going to be smaller, faster, cheaper. We know they're going to have more storage capability. That's got connectivity uh, in terms of bandwidth and, and so on and so on. No news there. The thing um, is really some of the other things that seem to be driving um, the, uh, this, this system as well is the fact that the, uh, the human behavior, the very unpredictable uh, factor in this year really, uh, is, is, is having some impact as well. Human behavior suddenly decided that even though we spent the last uh, hundreds of years um, trying to uh, guard our privacy, 
Now suddenly we decide to take all our inner private secrets and put them on social network uh, within the past five to two years. And, and to me, that's a very interesting, uh, um, that's a very interesting uh, thing to see, that now we're basically uh, going back towards where we were in the Stone Age, where we're sitting around the campfire and everybody knowing things about everybody. Uh, and we're trying to almost create that same situation again using technology. So willingness for humans really plug in their heart, so to speak, in a computer system is, a, is, is not something that you would be able to forecast similar to technology if looking at technology 10 years ago. Another thing that's interesting here is, of course, and this is an awesome thing here in the States because I believe that there's a lot more opportunity in regards to open data. There's a lot um, that is usually, uh, uh, we are further away here than, than um, uh, down that line than, than you, for example, in the ability for some uh, institutions to open up and share data that we can use. I mean, whatever your uh, business, there's no doubt that some of these data will give valuable insight. There's uh, also, um, if, if we know what we're looking for, I should add to that, because that's then that the the, the, no, the the amount of information that's relevant here is is going to be way smaller in percentages than if you look at your uh, systems inside your organization. I mean, the volumes need to work are way way bigger. And at the same time, some of these uh, the way that things travel, for example, on Twitter and other social media, is that the news relevant in the moment, but may not be like in an hour or two ago. At least in out that. Uh, a little news flash uh, on Twitter uh, two hours ago saying that there was two hours until um, my, uh, my talk here and people were still welcome to join. Uh, I'm pretty sure that in an hour or two that tweet is going to be completely relevant and so, and so on. So many of these things, either you pick them right away or you don't want at all and, and then they're irrelevant. And then the last school of thought that maybe over time this collaboration will replace search. I'm going to argue uh, whether it's going to be one or the other, I, I think it's going to be a little bit of both. But I think that it's going to be um, so that it's um, relevant for a company uh, or um, or a leader. You need to know what's going on in both. So and then finally, and this is uh, one of the things I, uh, I mean, this is uh, the the benefit of uh, of uh, starting uh, to program commercial software. Uh, more than two decades ago, is, is really that if you look at how technology seems to expand and contract, uh, look at web browsers. We started out having three uh, browsers uh, in the beginning. There was, uh, of course, Netscape competing uh, mainly with, uh, with the Internet Explorer, and then there was Opera. And then everybody started using uh, Internet Explorer uh, up to the uh, extend of 97% of the entire number of users. And now only today, when we develop software, we need to take at least five different browsers into account, primarily driven by mobile devices. And again, think about like this, first crashing and then expansion. Similarly with the, the, the model that we apply, the server platforms, it's like we start on the mainframe, then we went out and said, well, maybe we could uh, use a PC as well and do some of the work there. Then we decided to use a PC as a server, and now again we're we're going towards maybe cloud-based architectures to where we're um, we're going gonna to put more stuff in the cloud, and maybe we're even going to see, as I'm writing <laughs> down at the bottom, that some things will actually start driven by the need to high-performance analyze stuff that will go closer towards the hardware again, away from the cloud, uh, which is one of my theories because I think that. So we need to analyze so much data. We need to think about uh, virtualization and um, and and the the elasticity of the cloud. If we need 100% of the resource all the time, then maybe it makes sense, at least for some systems, to on 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 hardware that you control, and maybe even optimize the hardware towards specific tasks of analytics. Well, anyway, whether that happens or not, of course. Uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, the, the main point here, but I just think it's very interesting how these cycles work. The last thing was like when we started doing databases in the old days, first program flat files, then 
um, uh, simply program the database before we program the actual application. Then the error of the relational databases, there were standard databases, and if you didn't use like a Microsoft or Oracle or DB2, you were an idiot. Um, so, so in other words, you used to kind of like build on that. With analytics, we then had the multi-dimensional databases um, that uh, kind of like still live uh, and, and, and do well for some certain tasks. But uh, on the other hand, um, we see the more you want to go in memory, the more you want to do specialty type of analytics, it gets to be okay to do your own database. Now suddenly you're not a, a ridicule for programming a database. Now it's okay as long as it's for that purpose. And then going forward again, again we have the, the flat file. If you look at a Hadoop system, a Hive, it's really just a flat system again. So again, we have these cycles that I think are, are interesting. But anyway, all this, I, by the way, I, let me just put a quick word. So if you go to the blog and find this uh, post that I did a, a while ago, um, you'll find all of this uh, elaborated a little bit more. So I want to tire you with that, but it's just to give you the resource. Um, if I have to predict you to do one thing uh, after this, is please see Kevin Davin's uh, TED Talk about algorithm shared world. It's an awesome talk, and it's a really, really eye-opening thing about analytics, the extent to which analytics is applied, especially in the financial sector, but just imagine it's going to happen to every sector. The financial sector, uh, insurance are just going to be the first ones, if you, have to, if you want my guess. So we're going to do this more and more. And this is also like my main reason for saying, I think that we're going to see analytics getting closer to the hardware, even be integrated in the hardware going forward. Because that's really what's happening in the financial sector. The length of the cable, when it gets in, like where you locate your server on Manhattan, some makes a difference now uh, in, in terms of these algorithms. So um, this is just the beginning, and we're going to see that somewhere else as well. Now, go to watch big data. I just took a couple of um, looks here about um, some of the conversations that I've been uh, happy to engage with online. And one of the things that I think is, is, is the most important one, this is that, um, that the, the, um, the, uh, the, the data seems to be a big um, business priority. Whereas, you know, big data itself to me is really just a technological priority. Big data itself doesn't do anything. It's how you know we we use data or analytics in general to solve different problems. And I think that of course we as a um, we as a uh, as as vendors of course have been contributed contributing greatly to kind of like make uh, make make a confusion about this. But again, to me, uh, it's just important that now we're all here. We're talking about big data. We're talking about um, that there are opportunities there. Um, so um, so let's uh, move on uh, because everybody uh, here are already uh, on the same page as this. So kind of, uh, well, I mean, maybe that's a naysayer <laughs> uh, on 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 this talk, and then we can talk about that uh, during the Q and A. Uh, one of my main points, and these are just. Some of the numbers that I, you know, that's probably more than IDC that really tries to figure out how much data we have. But one interesting thing here uh, to me is just the fact that the amount of data is already huge and it's exponentially growing. And just about this, if, uh, unless the company is growing uh, 45% annually, time, then the amount of big data, only even if it's just a fraction of the data out there that are important to you, then it might be a shift towards some of the data you need to share with your organization, to compete with your organization, and come from the outside and be data that, um, that you don't have any control over. So in other words, I took one of the classic definitions about big data. Again, this goes back to saying, well, big data just defined as some kind of data defined with a technological perspective. And um, I don't agree with this. I think that big data is a much different problem than 
about how to put it on out of servers. Beta is a challenge for leaders and managers in the sense that it's an overwhelming amount. And if they tried, they wouldn't be able to download the entire internet on their servers and figure out what's going on. They would have to take some samples, some clues in data, and they would have to use those to figure out what to do. So in other words, this here is manually a lot of control in the sense that more data that you need to compete with are coming from the outside of your organization. And even worse, data that you do not own, data that you do not control, and therefore cannot really make sure that you can have tomorrow. All you can do is just use them um, to their abilities right at the moment. Uh, and unless you're Google and a few other companies in this world that can download the entire internet, this holds for most people. All the amounts, and I think also another thing to think about is that if you run on an ERP system inside on your internal data, you can behave as an accountant. You can take the sum of profit, then you can start deducting that and uh, and figuring out uh, where's profit coming from, who's generating it, who's losing money, and so on and so on. Well, the big data, since you can't download the entire internet, you need to come with a theory thinking. I think this year is a good idea. I think that I want to test this idea and see some evidence in the data. In other words, we'll be working on samples of data. And if you have to take anything away from you uh, from, from this session today is that start thinking about sampling data, creating some data sets that are relevant based on whatever you know about your business, and then use that, see if it works, throw it out, if it doesn't, try and think different. Different. Then try start building a huge Hadoop cluster and going out what to store all the data that you can, uh, what to do with that. Um, again, um, dividing faster, more and more capable. So the ability to do much more interactive analytics is increasing um, on the examples we take down. And also, data is getting more and more. It's going to be much a share of the data we need to compete. If we don't control them, they can shut down the data feed tomorrow, and we would not be able to do anything about it. Now, for the purpose of demonstrating how we can do stuff like this, I have a video I want to share with you. Um, and this is um, the first video I'm going to show. So uh, bear with me. And... Um,
experts. What happened here is that we really uh, did a, an inverted data warehouse, meaning that it's a lot of analytical autonomous clients that load data in memory. The big trick here is really inspired from a presentation I saw of big data from the uh, La Haldon Collider at CERN, in which they say 99% of the data that they get from servers once they do their Haldon collisions uh, is really weeded out. And the sooner you can throw away data, the better. Uh, and using the theory that you fire off a query and see where it goes, uh, you behave like a scientist as opposed to an accountant wanting the sum of all queries and then see which one is biggest. But doing this, you can actually push the query very closely back to the source. And you have also like a very interesting parallel analytic system. And here's like really my, my main point is that you can something that is operationally and strategically useful using somebody else's data if you just kind of like, like pull around and get the data out. And I used to call this data uh, like big data for the little guy because this is something that requires no more than some powerful PCs, maybe servers, but nothing more than that. So this is uh, one, one clean example that we've been using ourselves actually. Uh, another thing. Um, that, that I think is, is an interesting question that most uh, uh, companies probably would like to know about is that what customers looking for before entering your business, or uh, of course also what to say uh, to their friends that they done business with you. Um, and these here things, are of course, running alongside the same territory. I was always showing what. For example, the followers that I have on Twitter, and hopefully some of you are here today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I know about what folks on Twitter are concerned about. And that means, of course, then also uh, talking about leadership. Uh, data is something that is uh, really um, interesting to me, too. Uh, that would also be, if I look at my Twitter audience, what I probably would, would hope me to do. Again, doing stuff like that, I think it's very interesting and, uh, for, for all of us, really. This is an example of uh, another product uh, that's an add-on to the Target BI suite. What you see here is the, uh, the yellow line or the yellow dots going downwards is the Google trend for searches on business intelligence on a global scale. And the orange is uh, the trend of searches for uh, analytics. Then on top of that, the purple ones are searches for data. So then, if you develop new stuff, uh, let's say that you are in my position, would you do something business intelligence or would you do something big data analytics, uh, at least in order to, 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 to ride the waves of the future? Let's show you a quick example and a video as well in which uh, we actually take not just Google Trend data, but we take the data uh, on the lie uh, from Google and then join that with that from our internal systems like revenue and stuff. And it's to show you the potential of using uh, big data samples joined with your existing data on the fly, of course. It's just like a quick example. It's the same application, just showing where you have like uh, one trend of revenue, and then you take the samples uh, from the Google uh, trends and then join them. Um, I should mention, of course, that it's possible to all your Hadoop and all stuff as well. And my recommendation is that you start out sampling, start out in the discipline of just taking a new data set, try it out, throw it away if it doesn't work. Use it if it does, and then that, that discipline something really live because the most important thing here, and I think this is what we fuck when we try to solve everything with technology, is our human ability to theorize, to come up with new ideas, and that is far superior than computing's ability to just crunch all the numbers. 
numbers and figure something out. So if we can come up with the right theory and test that against the data, that much better way to exploit big data than trying to download them all. But then, of course, support technologies like that. Now, um, moving on, uh, I cannot help but uh, say that, that the consumption part of big data, uh, the consumption part of any data, is really one of my main concerns. I just want to show you a quick sample of where I see things going uh, device-wise, because as I said before, devices are getting smaller and smaller and more and more capable. How do we then interact with the big data? And you already saw how in the uh, crossbone technology, we just drag drop technology in, our data in. And, and this here would actually work on the data I demonstrated uh, on crossbone uh, in the previous video. So me. So words, um, what I want to say with this video here is that everything you see in this video will also be available on top of the beta. Again, it will require that somebody figure out which samples to use, but the idea that we should be able to use our mobile device interacting with the big data is also an important thing for me to, to come across with here. I would like to encourage everybody, all this technology that you've seen so far in this entire presentation, Available. If you're at a university and you want to play around with it, feel free to come visit our target.com slash lab, and then you can connect with us, and uh, you, know, you can download demos, you can get free licenses for your academic purposes. So just come in there and play along if you'd like to try some of this here uh, on your own. Um, I'd like to just uh, kind of like add to the end of this presentation. Um, the fling dream. That how many of you have had the fall dream where you just fall and fall and fall and right before you hit the ground, you up? Um, I guarantee you that uh, close to 74.5% of you have had that dream. Uh, and that alone is not really that um, surprising. What is interesting is that we found by interviewing guy divers that the more skydives you have, the likely 
this, that that dream changes. I think that the dream slowly continues after you hit the ground and you just like, and you still fall without a paradise or anything, but the dream continues. To me, this is pretty interesting. And for the reason that we are, it's a learned, it was something that was in our brain from the beginning. And by giving a number of examples, I recognize, of course, we're talking hundreds and thousands of jumps. Uh, by giving the brain examples, we can change even stuff that was put in our brain from birth. So overwhelming evidence here, in my opinion, is, is that fact can indeed be And I mean, if we can do this to stuff that was put in your brain from birth, what do you think we can do with the learned behavior such as, well, I fear losing a deal as a salesperson, or I fear an organizational change, or whatever that may be. There's so much opportunity to use facts to arise here. And all it takes is just making the facts live in the mind of whoever's operating in the organization, making facts actual for whoever operates in the organization. I really want to share an even more exciting fact about our brains that goes back to the sky because this previous example here requires hundreds and thousands of examples. This year is more about how fast our brains adapt. I think that the exciting thing that we have to show as, as a human beings is the fact that our brain can adapt itself to a new situation in just one example. You give the brain one example and it's already learning. Compare that to a supercomputer, no matter how powerful, it'll require hundreds, if not thousands of examples, even more to learn. So the shortcut to really using our human abilities in this entire data technology equation is to use our adaptability. And we've done experiments. I basically forced two employees to try that for the second time, and let's hear what they had to say. So words, the here is that, that our ability to adapt, what happens when you present the brain with a skydive the first time is that you kind of black out and you don't really understand what's going on, uh, at least not for like five, six seconds. And then second time, you suddenly send everything else and the sensory system of the brain has already adapted. This, in my opinion, is the reason why we should really think about how we use it ourselves the best as the quote unquote scientists want to start sampling our big data. Our ability to understand and to come up uh, uh, like sense signals uh, are superior to computing. And this is the shortcut if you're the little guy just trying to get your hands dirty on big data. About the examples I showed you already where I use Google data against internal data or use Twitter data uh, by sampling. I didn't Download all of Google, all of Twitter. I had a theory that maybe these would be interested in leadership, or maybe this query 
would be interesting to optimize. And then I just tested it out. And so I tremendously reduced the amount of data I need to process. I pushed the query back to the origin of the data. And then I uh, got some very useful data and some very useful insights. So basically, this concludes my uh, tour of the data-driven culture. Maybe I propose that we deal with a number of external data sources, a number of size of data sources uh, that, again, traditionally referred to as big data, but I would like to call them external data uh, to which there's a big challenge of trying to integrate or react, react to its adaptation exercise uh, more than a technological exercise, in my opinion. So that's the complete journey that I want to share with you. Mostly, I will say to all of you, whatever you're doing out there with organizations, because I think that the fight strategy in any market really applies. That's some of what I wanted to say. I'm very open to any questions, comments at this time. Thanks for my listening so far. Thank you so much. This has been great, and I'll give everyone a couple of minutes here just to get their uh, questions in the Q&A section in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, so feel free to, to get those in there. We definitely encourage questions. And one of the common questions are, and we've already had this question, is uh, if the slides and the recording will be available, and I'll be sure to get that out within two business days. So by end of day Thursday, uh, I will send a follow-up email with links to the slides, links to the recording. And there was a couple of requests for um, uh, videos that you were showing, Morton. So if you could send me those links. I'll oh, happily share all of them. That'd be great. <laughs> so <laughs> and everyone... just let me know how to do that. Uh, so they're not shared uh, as they are in the conferences right now. They need to be kind of like put somewhere else. Yeah, and send me, just send it to me an email, and I'll make sure and get it in the follow-up email out to everybody. So, um, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's perfect. And everyone's so quiet today. I don't know if everyone's just getting ready for the holidays or what's going on. And <laughs> but no uh -huh. questions. <laughs> uh, so yes, everyone's getting ready for the holidays. Everyone's winding down. Uh, <laughs> um, but <laughs> we've got, a, we've got an uh, quiet because we're all in awe. This is this is of course of Morton. It's just it's great. Um, everyone's just loving it. They're just kind of absorbing the information, Morton. So. Um, oh, right. I mean, thank, thank, thank you so much for feeding back. I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's really warming to the heart that when you're standing here just talking into a screen, you know, that yeah. uh, that that you still uh, thought that there was some useful in it. I also say that I'm uh, trying to be as much available as I can be on, on Twitter, for example. So if people want to just like you know, know tweet something later on, I'll happily see if I can you know. And whatever I can with Twitter. I mean, there's a limitation to what you can do there, of course, in terms of length. But I'll, you know, happily, I, I try to respond to people that you know, come up with comments or questions and stuff like that, to my best ability anyway. Um, oh, here we go. Um, so here's a question for you. In, 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 how many scenarios who really need BAs to call system for reports instead of other mobile apps? Why? Well, yeah. Well, one, one second again. I just have to. How many scenarios? What, what was that? Yeah. In general. How many scenarios um, really need BAs to call to system for reports instead of instead of other mobile apps? Like how 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 many just uh, will use that technology? Is that yeah. the question? If I understand it correctly. Yeah, how many business analysts? Uh, to call system for reports instead of... Uh, oh, no, I mean, I don't think that it is business analyst calling. I see this much more driven by end users. So business analysts uh, that have, like, the, the larger needs for analytics, they probably will, will be using something not that very different from what we have today. They will probably still have, like, a huge, uh, you know, computer to cross the numbers. The users that I'm trying to reach with the multi is the sales guy just needing to know something specific about, about a specific situation he's in. He only has his mobile device and doesn't have the skill to just create a report at all. He's basically just requesting information that caters a given situation that he's put in. That's the scenario where I see that very likely. And by the way, I don't think that oh, I showed both 
and analytics and a report. I think the most likely scenario is that people will be asking for something analytic, saying, I know um, the profit that we generated last year on this customer, or I want to know the Google trend of this word, um, you know, and then just get a, a reply that's, uh, you know, uh, they can start manipulating. And it's because of the size of the device. But I mean, think about this way. Think in which you need information while you're mobile. And I'll say that we are more mobile, but you know, it'd be nice if the system let you know, like through a warning, there's something wrong here, even though you're not at work, which typically will be, you know, depending on who you are, only like a third of the day. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if the computer called you and let you know when you had a problem? Then you could ask an analytical question back. Those are the type of scenarios that I envision uh, for the mobility. But time will show, I predict that in a year, we'll actually have this in a much more commercial application. Uh, it's relying on the underlying layer that is a patent that uh, this algorithm where you can basically type in everything. Uh, so, so, I mean, of course, time will show. But I think, um, I think that you shouldn't see this as a replacement for a traditional business analyst scenario. We should see this as an extension of uh, an ability that some people don't have today, either because it's too cumbersome for them to do it or because mobility alone prevents them from doing so. Did that make sense? Definitely, I think so. Um, and, and I know uh, there's an additional comment, uh, and, and the questioner said, yes, thank you. And um, so, absolutely. And, and um, other comments? Oh, if Seems like uh, another qu quick question here before we run out of time. It seems like a flexible approach. Um, is the adoption rate going up? A lot of companies have already got a lot invested in their current marketing technologies. Is Target uh, on any Gartner Magic Quadrants? Yeah, on the uh, Magic Quadrant for Business Intelligence. I believe they. I mean, we're not. You know, uh, Gartner categorizes uh, stuff, of course, their way. So, um, so they don't have something called like, an integrated business intelligence plus analytics platform, but that would be the most appropriate place to put us. But we're on the Gardner's Magic Quadrant for business intelligence, um, and there for a couple of years. Um, so, so yes. Something more to that. Um, I, I think I just answered the last part of the question, by the way. What was the first <laughs> part again? Sorry. The adoption rate going up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the uh, to which that we see more and more customers doing this here. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, this. Is, I mean, the trend, uh, in my opinion, is very clear that the traditional BI paradigm, uh, where where you simply just analyze on your internal data, um, and and just do it in a shall we say kind of like an accounting type of way, towards where you do analytics. Uh, on a much more, uh, than, I mean, first of all, doing analytics at all, even your accounting scheme can be a challenge. And of course, we've been dealing with that for more than 10 years. But definitely see a want and an interest in the ability to just take any external data source or any source that you just collected and then on the fly test it and see how it analyzes and then figure out do I want it or do I not. And then if you want it, of course, think of it as a sandbox where you really rapidly figure out what to use and what not to. So, I mean, definitely we see uh, that as being a very hot topic uh, among, um, among uh, the, uh, the, uh, both the existing customers we see, but also like the, the ones that we meet out there when we're, of course, competing as anybody else for new business. So definitely, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Morton. We are out of time, but thank you so much for this great presentation. There's a couple of comments in there from Paladin. Well, I'll make sure you get those. Um, and okay. just a reminder to everyone, I will send a link to the recording of this presentation, the slides, and uh, the the videos that Morton has provided throughout the, the presentation and everything else you guys have asked for, including, and you can find Morton on Twitter. It's uh, at Dr. Score Morton, M-O-R-T-O-N. For the uh, to find him on Twitter, and again, I'll get that. Out I can well. I can show my uh, I can show my contact information here right again. Yeah, right. I love it. I, I, I'll make sure and include that on the uh, the follow up email. Thanks, everybody, for uh, your questions.
questions and, and for participating in today's webinar. And Morton, thank you again for this great presentation. I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye.